You're live. You're on the air. Mr. Simmons, you're with me. Nice to see you. I'm, I'm certainly happy you're dressed for the occasion. You know what? Dress British, think Yiddish. I wore a good shirt for you. I got to write that one down. Where'd I you learned. <laughs> you what? I learned it from you. Oh, that's right. Are we good? Sure. That's the whole interview. That's it. Gene, I want, I want to welcome you, first of all, to Talking Wax. Talking Wax, we talk vinyl. We enter a little, little music, a little knowledge. There's a lot I want to talk to you about in a short amount of time because you're a busy man. I'm ready. But you ready? I want to go back, first of all, 1978. 1878. 1878. Right I'm honored to be here with an icon, a true legend, a man that influenced many out there. And if it wasn't for you, you made a lot of dreams. People feel like they grew up with you, Gene. So today on Talking Wax, we have Gene Simmons. How's that, Gene? How's that look? Oh, it looks good. That looks good. Yeah. That, that album cover, I'm going to tell you something. When that came out, and those four records came out as a kid growing up, yeah, it was just, it was probably the way you looked at Spider-Man as, as a kid or yeah. Batman. And I would hold that record, and I have it right over here. Um, and just stare at it, and tr and just from the first track. I would, I would too. You would. <laughs> I would just stare at it. Would you stare at it? Yeah. Look, oh look. yeah, and I'd listen to it all the time because I'm a big fan of me. Yeah. I know you are, and you know it's we have something in common. We're Jewish. Would, but I'm also a big fan of you. Oh. I thought <laughs> you were going to say you also have a 12 inch here. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just a big fan of you. Oh. Your record, it was so important. But when it first opened up, the opening track of, of that record, I was like, whoa, this is heavy. But then it gets into, it's so beatily. It's, it's a little funk. You got over there. You have songs on it that, from Rock Roll Over that you brought back in here. I want to know a lot about this record, recording the record a little bit. If you could well, take so me back. Well, so far you're doing all the talking, so I can't talk. So well, well, I want you to interview me and ask me about Gene Simmons. I'm not really interested in interviewing you. Uh, all right. Well, I want. I, you know, Gene. Uh, 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 all right. Let's go. What would Tell, you like to know? Uh, well, the making the record, uh, doing that record, it took. You know, you did Kiss, you did your four solo records, What's but the question? the question is, did. <laughs> God, Gene, you're busting my chops. The question. I'm not touching your chops. I wouldn't. Okay. okay. I'm going to call Dice Clay on to help me with this interview. How different was it from working with the band of taking this? You weren't playing bass. So, how, what was the difference of recording this record it for you? It was um, when somebody gives you the keys to the kingdom and you're, you're already the luckiest guy in the world because you're in Kiss and all that stuff and everything that goes with it. Uh, all four of us decided to record a solo record because the band almost broke up at that point because uh, both Ace and Peter were in their dysfunction period. I don't want to get into it, but it had to do with drugs and alcohol and an inflated sense, and I have that one too, of myself. And uh, Ace in particular wanted to leave the band, and then Peter also wanted to leave the band, you know, in a kind of, uh, I'm not getting my uh, share, nobody appreciates me, that kind of thing. And, you know, Paul tried to talk Ace out of it, actually flew up to Connecticut <clears throat> to convince him, look, stay in the band, have your solo career, we don't want anything from that, you can have your cake and eat it too. I remember on the way out, Ace told me, you'll see, I'm going to send 10 cell 10 million albums and god love him both ace and peter you know in the beginning of the band were just the best thing that ever happened to us but they've made such horrible choices in their life and they continue to do that they continue to make really bad choices not just in terms of their health and what you ingest but career choices like we just had this uh documentary that came out that's a headlining thing at the tribeca film festival <clears throat> And of course, um, without even thinking twice about it, we reached out to both Ace and Peter. Hey, you know, come and be part of this thing. You helped create the band, no question about it. And they refused. 
you know, Ace wanted certain, I want this, I want that, I want editing rights and that kind of stuff. And God love him, that wasn't going to happen. Uh, I didn't get those rights and didn't want them. I just wanted to throw caution to the wind and get the thing done. So they barely appear in it. But going back to the record, it was, the solo record was Bill of Coins' idea to try to save the band. So all of us went off on our own and did whatever. I, uh, I was seeing Cher at the time. So part of the tracks were recorded in LA and I called everybody and Donna Summer appeared on it and Helen Reddy came down and Janice Sian and I think Joe Perry was on it. A lot, a lot of people, Rick Nielsen. There was a sad story about uh, Grace Slick Gracie Slick, the, you know, the original lead singer of the Jefferson Airplane. And she was so chemically out of it that she passed out in the bathroom and was throwing up and whatever. And it took Janice in and might have been Helen Reddy, somebody that went in there and just kind of dragged her out so she could be picked up and off she went. I have no idea why. Again, bad choices. Yeah. And so I remember also that we decided, we, I, decided to take share and chastity and at that point, just, just that, and, and Elijah too, on the Concord and fly to England because there was a recording studio there in Oxford, right near Oxford University, down the street, down the street, you know, not far from George Harrison's house. And it was called The Manor. So I flew all the musicians who were gonna appear on it. And, you know, it cost a fortune, but when you do your solo record, money is, you know, no kind of, uh, not even consideration. Not a wise decision, by the way. Yeah. I haven't always made wise decisions because you could have done the same record someplace else without concording and <laughs> first class this and limos and everything. In fact, I remember when the musicians were out in the countryside at the manor, they were complaining, you know, we don't get a chance to go in to town and everything. So I arranged for a busload of chicks to come in from London to keep them occupied in the countryside. Hey, there's the rub, laddie. <laughs> So I decided also, I don't know why, maybe just to try to show people I could also play guitar because some of the songs, in fact, most of them were played on guitar, some on keyboard, between guitar and bass. So I played only rhythm guitar on the record. The bass was uh, Neil Larson, I think. And uh, a guy named Richard Bubba on keyboards, and I said, you can't, it's too Jewish sounding. You're never going to get it. <laughs> it's like, you know, we make great bankers and lawyers, but Ira, what are you doing <laughs> over there? Come on, yeah, rock on Ira. You know, you don't want that. Moshe. <laughs> Moshe. That's not cool. You know, we have lots of stuff, but we're not cool. <laughs> now I'm going to hear from the B'nai B'rith. Of course we're cool. No, we're not. We, no, we don't dribble ball. We don't, we own the teams, but we don't have that stuff. So that's where Dress British Think Yiddish came from. Which that's right. We assimilate our last names blow. I actually met a guy named Lipschitz. Come on. Yeah, that's right. We just don't have cool last names. What the hell kind of last name do you have? What is that? <laughs> Awful Pronounce name. <laughs> Pronounce your last name. My last name? Yeah. Adika. God bless you. Adika. <laughs> what kind of name is that? My dad's from Haifa. You're Who cares? Part, yeah, same part. I'm trying to bond. I'm trying to slip out the bond over bond, here. Bond bond. You have a choice in life. You can't change your skin tone. Actually, you can nowadays. But you have. A, you can change religions. You can create yourself. Wait, don't interrupt. I'm getting no, no, good uh, stuff. No, no, go ahead. Go, go. Yeah. And see, that's the problem with two Jews talking. How are you? How am I? How should I be? Who <laughs> wants to know? Why are you asking? It's just all questions. And the recording process um, took about a month over there to get the tracks down. And Cher 
uh, at that point got a little bored. So I sent my security guard and chastity and share shopping to Greece. <laughs> I don't know why. And then we came back to LA and I hired the American Symphony Orchestra and the Azusa Citrus Choir. It was a college in Azusa, California. And I'm sorry I didn't take photos or videos, but the entire symphony orchestra wore KISS, well, my wow. makeup, which uh, you could buy those things. It was just paper masks you put on your face. And it looked like you just landed on Planet KISS, or at least Planet G. So cool. So we, we did that record. I have to tell you, even today, lots of KISS fans especially sort of can't place it in the KISS uh, whatever you want to call it, puzzle, because it seems like it's a fish out of water. But neither I nor anyone I know is only one thing. You know, we have we all have our guilty pleasures, and I make made no bones about the fact that I adored and continue to worship the Beatles. Not the pop stuff, but the the craftsmanlike process of their songwriting is undeniable. To anyone who writes songs, you just look at that and you go, that's just, just beyond. It's simple chords and astonishing melodies and instantly memorable with hardly any guitar solos in the middle. No wasting. I mean, who would write a song called Yesterday? And here's the name of it. It's called Yesterday. Now, here's the beginning of the song. Ready? Yesterday goes right into the, the name of the song. The first thing you remember, that's the chorus. Here's another one. Michelle, it goes right into that. Yeah. She loves you, yeah, that's the name of the song. She loves you. Help, I need some. Who writes songs like that? It's easy, by the way, to say, okay, I'm going to write a song called, uh, you know, Steam Bucket. Great. Now, here's the first word of the song. Steam Bucket. No. <laughs> there have been perfect songs like that. Charlie Chaplin wrote one called Smile. Smile. And it goes like this. Smile, though your heart is aching. But the, the, the genius of that is you have smile, then you have pause. Smile, pause. Though your heart is aching, so you have a chance to digest the title. Likewise, yesterday. Yesterday, pause. All my troubles seem to and ad infinitum ad nauseum. It's easy to talk about it and say, oh, that's how it's done. Try to do it. It's almost impossible. Uh, you know, I tried to do it with uh, See You Tonight. See you tonight. It just, I tried it at the beginning. It didn't make, didn't make sense. It didn't have that, uh, what do you mean, see you tonight? So you had to introduce the lyrics and finally get to see you tonight as the last part. So I, I want, listen, I brought that song as well as uh, Burning Up With Fever, which Donna Summer was on with me. That's her on top. She was going to record it on a record, and Georgia Moroto said, let's go a little more disco. So they didn't do that. She wanted to do that song. And wow. the thing is, she was my neighbor. We lived in the same Fifth Avenue uh, townhouse. I had the penthouse, and she was on the first floor. We'd see each other all the time. Okay, back to you. No, 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 no. Go. Keep going. I, I like hearing these stories. So, so you that song was written for Donna Summer originally, or no? No, I didn't write any songs for anyone, as opposed to Paul, by the way, who wrote uh, Hard Luck Woman for Rod Stewart. So that is true, to Rod, that tale about him yes, writing. Yes, he wanted to send it to Rod, and I said, no, don't. you're not going to do that. We should record that. If never I met you. We're talking about hard luck woman. Let's take it from there. Because that's Jews, I, Jews, Jews are as embarrassing as Canadians. And <laughs> I'm married to one. You know, you can be sitting in a movie theater and some guy's walking by in the background, and I'll get my ribs, you know, kicked in with the elbow. Mm -hmm. See that guy? He's from Winnipeg. I'm going, I don't I don't care. And Jews are the same kind of thing. It's like, you know, yeah, you know that guy that yeah, Alfred Wombat? He's a Jew. He changed his name, but he's a Jew. <laughs> the rest of the world doesn't give a fuck. But your last name is, wasn't so bad. Klein? It's not a bad name. It's not Rock. 
Sounds Sim- like a ba- sounds like a baker. So so wh- did Simmons? Where did? Well, now I lost you again. Yeah, you, that's because I'm texting at the same time. Okay. No, it's not. It's you know at the same time, I do you. Yeah. I've got businesses going on. I and that's why I appreciate. I honestly appreciate you being here. I know you're really busy, and I don't want to waste your time. And you know, every time I meet with you, it's always like really quick. Or, you know, five seconds, you're busy, you're working, and you're putting on a or, great or show. You're doing, or you're doing the smart thing, which is bringing me Jew cake. Uh, you, Gene, the funniest thing, when you were on the Jimmy Jimmy Kimball show, and you guys were walking to to perform, and I was sitting there with my son. At the time, he might have been like seven, six. And I was sitting in in the, the part, is like I guess a VIP, but I don't know what it was. You're in the whole demon outfit, lodging in life. And you go, where are my Jew cookies? And everybody looked, do you know him? They looked, I go, well, well uh, my friend, you know, and I didn't know what, I didn't I'm know sorry, what to say. What, but, I'm sorry. What's the, what's the definition of friend? Not familiar with that term. Gene, you, you know what? Eric is my friend and you know what? You are I'm actually, so sorry. I know, but you're, you know what? Behind the mask and behind us, you have a great heart and you actually are really good. I don't care what you say. And, and that's it. And, and I'll be the first to say, you do a lot, and people don't even know about it, and you're a really good guy, and I'm going to say it, and I don't care if I'm kissing your ass, it's the truth, and I stand by Simmons. I don't want you to kiss my ass, I want you to lick my ass. I don't want to lick it. I don't want to, I'll, I'll watch the song when you play it live, but I don't want to lick it. it. Up. Great song. I want to, I want to, Simmons, the names, how did you, where, where did it come from, the actress, where did it come from? Well, uh, no, it was not that, although I will tell you a story, I was at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, and at night, I don't remember what time it was, my phone rang. And I hear, yeah, and I hear a voice that says, sweetheart, you don't know how long I've waited. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. What's, what's going on? Gene Simmons going, yeah. So it was clearly Stuart Granger, I think, who was the actress Gene Simmons' husband. Either that or it was you know, a, a play toy guy. Yeah. So I was uh, mistaken for her. But that's okay, because nowadays I'm mistaken for Richard Simmons. <laughs> another, <laughs> by the older folks. Young folks have no idea who that is. But Paul and I were uh, taking the subway back to where we lived in Queens, because we rehearsed in Manhattan. And literally sitting across from us are very polite but clearly nighttime folks didn't look like somebody you should be talking to. So we're just talking to ourselves. And uh, Paul says, you know, I don't want to be Stanley Eisen. That ain't rock. Sounds like a lawyer or something or an accountant. Because that's what, that's what we do. Uh, we don't have cool rap names like MC Criminal. We don't have that, <laughs> which is not a bad one. Probably, <laughs> probably, ac- probably accurate. And so he said, I'm going to be Paul Stanley. I don't know where he got that from. Well, he took his first name and put it into his last name. And Paul, I guess because he liked that name, maybe Paul McCartney. And I have no idea where this came from. And I said, I'm going to be Gene Simmons. Just like that. Immediate. Without thinking about it or anything. And I think it's a word of advice to a lot of people is, you are allowed to invent yourself. You don't have to be just a clone of your parents with their name. Nobody is born the edge. Sweetheart, look, we have a new baby, the edge. <laughs> Including Bono and Madonna and all those, and Cher, obviously. Yeah. Uh, everybody's allowed to call themselves whatever the fuck they want. So my hat's off to... The rappers, you know, you never meet a, a guy whose name, yeah, you know, J. Wow Low, but the, you know, all these names. They're not born with that. They decide what they want to call themselves, and that's it. And that's a good piece of advice. Create your, invent yourself. Don't be somebody else's invention. That is good Unless advice. You be. But then you'll be ordinary, and I prefer being extraordinary. Let me ask you when well, you changed your name, yeah. Did you growing up and you, did your mom ever say anything? You changing your name? Never no. gave you a hard time. No, she really uh 
my mother was a remarkable uh, human being. All my, she was my moral compass. Anything I learned about life, hard work, and the important things. Not, not well educated, but her perspective was actually much more important to me than anybody else. And I'm only pausing because, you know, it's very emotional for me. She was 14 years of age when she was in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany. So she had points of views about life, hard work, never giving up, and only worrying about the important things, whether your room is a mess or whether you have a toy for Christmas or any of those, those are not important. Your health is important. Yeah, all those corny things your parents told you about, yeah, they were right, especially your mom. And your, your friends from school, they're the fucking morons. You listen to them. Hey, man, let's go smoke cigarettes. Let's get high. Let's go do this. They're idiots. They're wrapping fish in some supermarket right now. And that's fine, too. You can do that job as well. But all those high school jocks, you know, who became football players and stuff, one out of a thousand made a career. The rest of them had nothing to fall back on and are you know, are, are working with their hands because they never mm -hmm. developed their minds. My mother always stressed the important things. Don't get high, don't drink, don't smoke, work hard. Surround yourself with people who are more successful and smarter than you are. That's a good piece of advice. Get rid of your loser friends. They're vampires. They will suck the life out of you. They want things from you. Be around people who look better than you, go to better places, are smarter. You'll have something to learn. You will learn nothing from the corner wino. Nothing. I don't even remember your question, but I was more interested in what I had to say. Next week, we'll see you here at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. Eastern with Gene Simmons of KISS. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Also, please, right below, subscribe and hit that bell to be reminded for other great episodes like you just watched right now. Until then, everybody, we'll see you later. Now get out of here, you crazy kids, and have a good night, all righty? Talking wax. Talking wax.